Hello, hola, bonjour, how do? How are you all? How is everybody? Welcome back to Turf More House TV, and it has been a while. Um, so first and foremost, I do apologize for the lack of content that has been coming out from the channel, but on the plus side, your mental health and everything from a family perspective will always, always come first. Uh, and I think, you know, that's one thing that we need to look at. You know, football does have, I think Vinnie Jones has come out today with a video saying how people's mental health can be affected by football scores, results and things like that. I'm not saying that's why. It's not been that bad. I've managed to get to this point. We're on a run. I should be happy. Um, but yeah, things things like your family always will come first. However, however, we are here to talk football and the amazing job that Burnley are doing of getting that train back on track. Now, I've been adding in the bogs since the start of the season on this train. They found me. They're trying to kick me off. But I'm doing an Amy Winehouse. I said, no, no, no. I ain't getting off just yet. Um, there's that slight glimmer of hope in these last seven, last seven, you heard it right, cup finals that we have to play in the Premier League. And I'm glad to be joined by the man, the myth, the legend. That is Mr. At Always Claret, Mr. Andrew. And to the Drew, how are you doing? I'm not bad, mate. I'm not bad. Thank you for uh, having me on tonight. Yeah, voice is just slightly, still, still a little bit husky from Tuesday night. Um, there were quite a lot of expletives coming out of my mouth on uh, on Tuesday, so I do apologise. But yeah, yeah, been worse, been worse this season. Yeah, yeah. I bet, I bet. Uh, other than the croaky voice, how, how have you been yourself? Are you you're happy with finally putting a run of results together? Yeah, um, I think when we're at the West Ham game, I've managed to keep one eye on the score, but also watching uh, Vintage Clarets down at Colm, so that was a good bit of a day yeah, out. Yeah. And then uh, since then, we've we've been doing all right. So, yeah, overall, can't complain, really. No, I mean, you can complain if you're a Colm fan. I mean, they, I think they've got a game every single every single day in April, by the looks of things. They've been screwed um, over, aren't they? Yeah. Big time. I think the pitch is an absolute shambles, though, but still... I think yeah. they said that they had so many games and then the game that they said when Match of the Day posted it as well also got called off, so they're now going to have to try and fit that one back in as yeah, well. So I think, mad, uh, madness, madness. Yeah, it's look, it's looking like I think it's the 18th, 19th and 20th of April. They're going to have, yeah. it looks like they're going to have a game each one of them days. So, hey, get yourselves down, lads. Come on, let's have a exactly. couple, of, couple of days down at Colm. Proper football. Exactly. Why not? All the local sides. I think Cone obviously have got a big bulk of games at home that have had called off. So go and support them in the non-league fixtures. Uh, also, Padium are playing this weekend as well at home to Charnock Richard, um, and they are literally on the cusp of the playoffs as well. So Padium with yeah. an opportunity to get into the playoffs. Just just putting it out there that these local sides that you can go to if you haven't got a ticket for Everton. Go and support your local non-league team, um, and you'll probably have better signal up there to get to, to check the Burnley <laughs> score than you do at Turf Moor or all like that. So it's not too bad. A um, few people in the chat, Burnley gurus in, and says we are a better away team. Remember that there is that, there is that. We've we sort of play with that. You know, we haven't got that tag of having to make Turf Moor a fortress. So I couldn't agree more. Martin's in. How are you doing? All is. Getting better, shall we say? All is getting better. Right, let's start off then, Andrew. Let's dissect it. The uh, the game against Wolves. First and foremost, just I was at work, sadly. I was at work, sadly. Um, but I'm checking my phone. Uh, the, the day was manic, but I was still checking every now and again. And then I heard it buzz in my pocket. And I thought even the missus has messaged me or something's happened it's good. and then obviously <laughs> I, well i saw that i saw the brun larson um post and i was like oh my god uh we want to look with maybe keeping this train going and then what 10 15 minutes later it's half time it's 1-1 shouldn't have been 1-1 i think we can all say that um we have been massively yeah. done over haven't we not just the wolves game the chelsea game as well i think i think every single person on talk sport has said how bad that decision against chelsea was um, but for you, obviously, the, we'll speak the Wolves game more than the Chelsea fixture. 
it wasn't a free kick at all, was it? He's fallen over. Simple as that. No. It, he's doing some kind of pirouette dancing move, and I think that in from Strictly come dancing with our Tuesday night as well, weren't it? Yeah. So I think they've been t- giving each other a couple of, couple of lessons, but no, it, it wasn't a free kick. I mean, we sit in the Jimmy McUpper and you could see it from there that it weren't a free kick. The referee's two yards in front of him. So how he's decided to give that, it's, it's nonsense, but we should have defended it better. Um, it's happened all season, hasn't it, where we get to half-time and we concede a late goal just before going into a break. So, yeah, it were it weren't a free kick, but we should have defended it better. And I don't know. I'd, I don't want to say on the game that we deserved the point because we didn't. We deserved all three. Um, yeah, I think we're at BBC or Premier Premier League or someone put on Twitter or oh, the Clarets hang on for a vital point. No, Wolves hung on for the vital point. We we should have got. You know, we should have come away with all three. Murich had a couple of good saves, but yeah, I mean, to be fair, that's probably that's probably the one that they're probably speaking about. The I think it was Ike Nuri with his second chance of yeah, you know, grabbing the second, but far, well, well stood by Murich, spreads himself really well. Yeah. Um, Ike Nuri were one on one with Murich, and obviously, uh, Murich does what Murich does most, uh, mm-hmm. which is puts his body in front of it. Yeah. And blocks it, but like you said, we had chances at the other end. We had Rodriguez, yeah. and then tried the follow up as well. And it's just, yeah. It, I mean, tell we you what, at Chelsea, we had that at, at Chelsea with Rodriguez as well, didn't we? Yeah, you we know, did. so it is. Yeah. It's a goal coming from J Rod at some point. Um, it wouldn't surprise See, I've, me if the I've story's written. Season. He scores the goal that keeps us up. <laughs> I've said all season, you know, we need to get J Rod playing because, all right, he might not have the ability there anymore. But yeah. he's still he's still got some ability. He's still a decent striker, and the lads claret and yeah. blue through and through. You can see he'd run through brick walls for the club. So, you know, we're stuck in a relegation battle. Me and you would do anything to get on the pitch and fight for the shirt out. J Rod's there. He's got the chance. You know, he, he's gonna put all the effort in that we want. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like that him to score at winner. And obviously, everyone knows my love for J Rod anyway. So, him to score winner, I'd be I'd be chuffed with that. Definitely, definitely. But uh, you know, we've said so many times about how many chances we've had to put games to bed. It's been one of those that's been a, a stalwart all season, really, where we've just not yeah. buried our chances when given. Uh, other than that, we've had officials basically just. Oh, it's Burnley. Let's do them over, you know. VAR check club badge and all that shenanigans. Ah, uh, but companies facing the wrath. Uh, it's not fair, really. I mean, why is company being charged by the FA? I totally understand his frustration uh, in that Mudrich decision against Chelsea. This however, is... however, why are the referees not being penalised either? No, that's that's the thing. Like he's called out. They're bollocks, basically, and yeah. I'm not in the camp of oh everyone's. I mean, Tuesday night I was screaming Premier League corrupt as fucking everything, but uh, no, I'm not. I'm not necessarily in the camp that everyone's against us, and uh, you know they want us relegated. But I think the referees are just crap, and they've like we've always had crap refs. Like that's always been a thing. We've never had decent refs in in England. But they just seem to be VAR were brought in to help them, and it just mm. seems to highlight how crap they really are. I mean, that on Tuesday night when he falls over at ball, like, why can't VAR? I get that it's in the rules that they can't check that, but why not? Because he stood two yards in front of it and he can't see it. Can Wolves fans in the way end could see that it weren't a free kick, and then he lets them all right free kicks given whatever we defend it poorly but he lets them take the kick kick off he lets us kick the game back off and then they decide to pull it back for for um var check and i mean if you've seen it offside it's nowhere near offside no. so it's the most ridiculous check anyway so what you know and then early, i think earlier in game foster got booted in first and now even got done you know they're just they pick the moments of when to check on var and what to do and it's just crap. 
Like, get yeah. rid of referees, get rid of VAR, bring in ones from you, because it only goes wrong in England, doesn't it? Everywhere yeah, else, it seems I think it was on Talksport. Right. Uh, on Talksport, there was mm. Gabby Adban Lahore and um, Jamie O'Hara, and they were talking about the decision against Chelsea. And mm. even uh, even Gabby Adban Lahore said, "Just you know, VAR. If it's going to be here, it's going to be here. But take your mates yeah. out of the box. Put ex pros yeah. in there that understand the game. You know, yeah. you can easily factor it to the fact that these players haven't played for either club." So they don't. They, you don't even need to know the players. These could be players no. from League League One, League Two, Premier League, whatever. Anywhere, nobody needs to know who's in that room, other than it's ex, no. ex professional footballers. They would tell you as it is. If anything, I'd I'd say do put a defender in there and an attacker. You get both angles. Then how a defender would look at no. it, how an attacker would look at it. And if if they're honest, then maybe that's the way to go. But yeah, you're never going to win an argument with the FA. And if, if it's anything to go by with what I shared earlier of this luxury tax thing that's being banded around oh, as well, um, then that's a farce well, as well. That's just, that's just coincidentally come out just as Man City and Chelsea are starting to get looked at uh, being investigated. How hmm. ironic, mate. How ironic. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Um, it's getting beyond the joke. It's, why fix something that isn't broken? We enjoy football as football. All you're doing is creating more talking points. We we didn't have any problem with going down to the pub, sitting there going, oh, referee, we're a joke this week. Because it's human error. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But when there's cameras there that are brought in to clear up clear and obvious errors, and they go against everything that everybody in the world can see, then scrap the lot. Scrap the lot, either because it either, either get it to work you've got, or you get rid of it. This is the thing on a on a Saturday afternoon, you can get a stream from, I don't know, somewhere in India, you can get a stream from, and it's got better quality picture than what you get on the VAR cameras. There's millions of cameras round on pitch, and you get dodgy camera angles every week. You've got referees trying to defend the minutes, like. Who, who, who was that game that we every... had though? Who was that game that we had where J Rod was uh was apparently he, he said was, that he was on side with Forest Bournemouth, away, Bournemouth yeah Bournemouth yeah. It, it, it said on side and then did another angle and said he were offside. You like yeah. make it make like, sense, mate. You've got that many cameras, but you've got like Mike Dean on Sky Sports News on a Saturday afternoon backing his mates up. You've got Howard Webb who's in charge of it all who everyone knows is a United from, from back in day. Yeah. Uh, what else have you got? Oh, you've got Dermot Gallagher and Michael Owen talking about it on a Sunday morning and that all they're ever going to do is pack the mates up. And even they said it were a ridiculous foul for Asin Yon on I think it, I think it's, it's just an excuse just, for them to have another show, to have... Yeah. viewings are going down on Sky so let's give them something to speak about let's create yeah. a show all about drama and it wouldn't surprise me it's like Sky Sports version of fucking Love Island or Big Brother it's dog shit it's 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 unnecessary everybody doesn't like being fucked over you're going out to put your hard earned money that you've earned mm -hmm. that week into watching your football club get done over by the FA there is a lot of people in this world that are falling out of love with football due to these yeah. inconsiderate money grabbing Football ruining bastards. There you go. Yeah. Woo, that feels better. Now I've got that one out. Like, <laughs> all, all it does though, like, I remember years ago, I can't remember what year it were, but we played Millwall and we were two, yeah. uh, we were two one up and we scored a perfectly legitimate goal. It can't be that long ago because Stanislas scored it. Perfectly legitimate goal to go three one up. It got flagged for offside and they went straight down the other end and scored. That's when VAR should have been, you know, that's what yeah. VAR's there for. Not, oh, he touched that, me on the shoulder, enough, so I'm going to go down Bournemouth, back. Weren't it? That was against Bournemouth at the turf. It, it could have been, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just remember us being screwed over by oh, it. And, oh, did, oh, like, we, we got fouled. It should have been a penalty. They went up the other end, scored, and then it got pulled back. Their goal ruled out, and we got a pen. Oh, no. No, this is before VAR. Oh, that's this is before like, that. Before that, yeah. So it's so yeah. it's like that's what VAR is there for to check stupid yeah. decisions like that. Not 
oh, he tapped me on the shoulder, so I'm going to go down like I've been shot. And little offside, if you can't see it with your naked eye, or you can't see it offside after five seconds, can't see it with your naked eye, or there's any doubt, stick with on-field decision. Yeah. I'd rather talk about how shit the referee were than how shit those 1,500 cameras are around the ground. 100%. 100%, mate. Let's have a look at some of the comments. That's my rant on VAR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fly over Fred has said, I'll read, lads. I'll read to yourself, big Fred. How are you doing? Uh, also says, Bath University did a study a while ago and they proved, in mm. capitals, proved that the technology cannot accurately measure offsides. You can see from the camera, the pitch is at an yeah. awful angle. It's shocking. Yeah. Uh, big Scott's in the building as well. How are you doing, mate? Um, everything's good from this side for me, and I'm, I'm sure Andrew is probably the same. Uh, but, yeah, if you can, do what Scott, say, uh, Scott says there. Please, everyone, smash the like button. If you are listening to us on podcast, this will be back. This will be available on podcast platforms, by the way, if you do miss out. Uh, and if you missed the start, we've just had a big mad rant about VAR. If you want to check it out, feel free. Uh, Christian Zinn, hope you well, says, evening, gents. Uh, true fans getting priced out of the game also. There is that. There is that as well. I thought, wasn't there something brought in for the Premier League around, uh, is it like 30, 30 is enough or something? I think that's, is it for away yeah. teams? Yeah, I think um, so. I think we, di we did it last year, didn't we? We uh, Did we try and do a match price ticket or something for yeah. away fans and if you do it yeah in the championship yeah i think 25 something. and 25 but there were some clubs yeah. that were charging us what 37 quid a ticket and you're just like yeah. right we're clear to see what those arseholes are playing at and we yeah. we did the same when they came to us we thought no if you're going to yeah. be an arse we, we can play our ball we'll as well be an arse as well but but no it's season tickets have gone up haven't they and i think They've, they've screwed some people over. We've, like, I personally, I've done all right. Um, like, my family's done all right. My dad's just, my dad's just turned 65. So he just, his, his season ticket goes down, but then the price has gone up than what it mm -hmm. were this year. So he's, he's saving money for his age, but again, it's gone up. It's a bit, you know, it, it's, I don't think it's fair really for kids and, no. It's, especially as a it's especially good. as clubs are sort of at that point now where they're trying to they're trying to bleed through the next level of supporters. You know, yeah. they're going around schools, communities, trying to get you know the next yeah. the next batch of fans through, and they can't do that because of what's going on. It's 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 bad. Yeah. Chris is in the chat from Leicester to Lad RTV. Hey, my fave Northern Ginge. Well, I'd hate to see who your Southern Ginge is. Because he's not got a bloody patch on me. Uh Chris, VAR, what's cheering, that? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um you should know. You should know you were done over it by it a few times. You sit last season yourself. Are the wheels falling off on, on Enzo's it. car at Leicester? Year. Who knows? Are the wheels falling off at Leicester? Time will tell. Um I think Scott's I the... think that's all a play, you know. What's you happening at Leicester? Smash it for two thirds at season. And then drop off at end of it, so you don't have to put up with VAR for next year. Ah, it's a brilliant method, idea. Method to the madness. Brilliant method to the madness. I, see, I like that. Uh, Scott said, "What gets me is the government have threatened they will get involved unless the Premier League can sort itself out. We need, like, we need any more corruption in the game. We don't need Rishi Nutsack getting his flaming hands on the Premier League and pretending he knows what's what. No chance." Uh, Christian said, should be £30 across the board. Let's be honest, clubs at our level don't make their money on match tickets. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Fly of a Fred said, did you see that Leeds, Leeds charged Hull fans 47 quid? That is scandalous. The, the That's the Leeds United who, were, who are a, a massive club, but have been in League One a lot more recently than some of the little tin pot teams like, oh, Burnley, are we tin pot? Oh, no, we're not. Mm -hmm. We've got more history, probably. Than leads of recent years. Um, and Chris says the, the wheels have rolled down the hill. Hopefully, Jack and Jill are all right. Uh, they only went to fetch a pail of water and they saw Leicester fucking chasing behind them. Nobody needed that. That's the modern day story. Um, right then, let's obviously, we've talked about the Wolves game, we've talked about VAR, companies, FA charge. Uh, it's Autism Awareness Week as well. 
uh, this week. I think the club have come out and said about that. Um, I think the CEO, Matt Williams, who deals with transfers and D-Money, uh, has D-Money. said about how his, his son suffers with autism. I think there's a lot more yeah. that can, can be done, obviously, um, with autism. Uh, I've got a stepson um, of, uh, on the autistic spectrum. And it's all well and good clubs having sensory rooms and things like that. But there is so much more that you can do, isn't there, um, yeah. within football. And it's just about raising that awareness. So fair play to the club for yeah, that. There's, um, there's something that I've noticed as well when we went in club shop the other day that I don't think has been pushed out there. But And I don't know, if, I think this is to do with, I'm not knowledgeable on autism. I've no one in my family who's on the spectrum, as far as I'm aware. Um, so I don't know a lot about it, but the ear defenders that a lot of kids wear when they go on the turf, that's like to do with being slightly autistic, isn't it? And they've yeah. started selling them in the club shop. Just well, this like is your something headphones. I pulled up. This is something I pulled up at not the last fan board meeting because I couldn't make it, but the one previous. Uh, Alan Pace I asked people for a few questions. Yeah. And I mentioned to him that there was a little girl that he had a picture with that always, she with autism, this routine, yeah. colour-coordinated, things like that, she wanted some claret headphones to go with all the claret stuff. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I mentioned it, and he said, oh, yeah, I, I remember the picture. I remember the little girl. Yeah. Russ, write that on your list. I need to speak to you about it yeah. in the coming days. And to be fair, if they are in the club shop, brilliant. They've listened to yeah. what we've said as fans. Yeah that there's got to be that diverse thing. So, you know what? Fair shout to the club, Alan, yeah. Russell Ball and everybody else behind yeah. the scenes for doing stuff like that because that's um, yeah, that's that's massive for us. Yeah, they're in they're in there as, you, as you're walking, you know, how they've got the uh, all the prints in the glass frame and stuff and then just yeah. around that corner, they've got the other glass frame. They're in there on the top shelf, but I wish they'd push it. I wish, you know, yeah. like... This this is where they can promote that. One more defeat, and I'll push the shelf myself, mate. <laughs> Over it goes <laughs> in a bit. <laughs> no, but like this this is the thing. Like they do so many good things to Burnley for the community, and they're not pushing it. And this is like the Easter egg thing that they did the other week. I didn't see anything on social media till the day before Autism Awareness Week. I didn't know what like. I don't know about you, but I didn't know about it until I think it was like the day before the match or the day after yeah. um, when they did the Christmas presents. You know, there's so many things that the club does for the community and they just don't seem to promote it. And it baffles me. Like, in fact, yeah, bring this up in next uh, next meeting because it, it honestly baffles yeah. me that it takes two minutes to stick something on Twitter, two minutes to stick something on Facebook and they don't promote it. And like with these ear defenders, absolutely brilliant idea. Absolutely amazing. But if you don't go in club shop, you're not going to know. Yeah, you're not going to know at all. Um, Fred's just put in as well. The club put a video out with um, Williams and Marnie. It's 17 minutes and well worth watching. It is. It is. If you're not, you know, I came into my relationship uh, that I'm in now. And obviously I knew naff all about autism. And... My partner asked me that question, you know, are you or are you okay to take me on as your partner? Sort of when I've got two children, um, one with special complex needs, and how how do you sort of feel about that? So I was like, Listen, it I don't see any child as baggage or anything yeah. like that. I know there's people out there that oh. do or whatever, that's their own take on life. Um but I love you for you and whatever comes with you, you know, comes with me as well. So I've learned a lot along the way and Mason is my best friend. Uh, he He's literally, I come in from work, he's waiting at the door, literally waiting for me. Uh, he can't wait. He's, he gives me a hug, but he doesn't give his mum a hug. Um, he, we have such an understanding and I'm so glad that the awareness is being given from the club but I think it's now right now while the fire is hot and it is Autism Awareness Week to like you said push those certain things that yeah. sh- should be done Um so yeah fair shout and I'm glad you, like I say I'm really glad you, you brought that up 
Uh, Christian says he uh, class gesture from the club that things like this will attract the new generation of fans to the club. 100%, 100%. It doesn't discriminate. And other fans who can't quite handle the noise, but like the atmosphere of being around the stadium yeah. and being able to watch football, I think it's brilliant. Um, yeah. And like Christian adds to that, um, fans should be put at the forefront of any campaigns by the club. 100%. Oh, yeah. um, exactly, Scott. Exactly. Some people... Some people step up, some people shy away, but it shows your uh, strength of character. Uh, right then, football. Dash, Tarps, <laughs> McNeil, Keane, Burnley B. We're playing Burnley B at Goodison Park <laughs> this weekend. Um, it's the old guard, Andrew. It's the old guard, and uh, but but we're on we're on we're on form. Someone said it in the chat earlier. We're decent away from home, but it's Dash. It's Everton. Your thoughts? Well, you just said strong character there, didn't you? And I just thought, oh, he shaved his head here. He's just emulating Daichi, <laughs> isn't he? But do you know what? I'm absolutely bricking it. Um, yeah. yeah, we're all, we're a good team away from home. Yeah, we're unbeaten in four. And, you know, it's uh, it's Deitch, Deitch Derby. And we know what Vinny's like under, uh, under on Derby games. But... No, I'm 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 absolutely bricking it. It's they haven't won a game since they beat us at turf two 0 yeah. yeah, that says something, doesn't it? So you know full well Burnley all over, you know full well what's coming. Um we struggle to break teams down at the best of times at the minute. And is just in the gonna... chat. fine margins. It's all about the fine margins. <laughs> It's a tough market, but yeah, it's it's that strong jaw mentality, and he's going to be out for blood. He's hundred oh, percent. You know, we we saw it in the cup game when we played him. You know, Deitch never put strong teams out in the cup, but when he came up against us, it was the strongest team they could have. Um, we saw it at. Uh, we just we need to forget who we're playing. We need to forget about Deitch. We need to forget about Tarky and McNeil and Keane and. We need to forget about that because we showed them too much respect at Turf. Yeah, we did. We did. Way too much respect. Uh, I've just, just some stupid reason, uh, gone onto the Everton website um, just to see what Dash has actually said ahead of the uh, fixture. Um, obviously, he's been talking about injuries. Uh, I think he goes, he goes on to say, basically, that he wants to find consistency. Um, he wants to take this weekend, this energy about playing at home for his team. Uh, but it's, he wants to take the the noise away from the job he did at Burnley and focus on what he's doing at Everton. And Dash was sort of very much like that at it Burnley, wasn't like it? It was, a case of, it was a case of, oh, you're coming up against your former club, Watford. How do you feel? And they just be like, well, it's just business as usual. You know, I'm a manager. I'm not at Watford anymore. I'm at Burnley. Forget about it. And he'd dull it down. But, um, as I say, for fans, this the, bear in mind, this is the third time we have played Everton this season. Obviously, they knocked us out of the cup. Mm. Uh, obviously, it's always good to give Dash that, you know, thanks for everything. We didn't really get to say that goodbye no. uh, properly. But yeah, it is. You're coming up against a sticky Everton side who it's just like Burnley to roll out the carpet and go, we're here, we're on a good run. There's a red carpet, Everton. Come and come and knock us off our perch. Well, what is it? They've not they've not won in twelve games. Yeah. Um, the last time they won were against us. Calvert Lewin hadn't scored in nearly two years, but got his first goal other night. You know, it's it's everything. It's us against them. Set pieces. We're yeah, awful set at set pieces. pieces. They're 100%. just set pieces. Um, it's big Deitch. It's yeah. Yeah, Fred says it there. They'll do us on set pieces. We've not to concede set pieces. And that 90% of our team never played for Dash. I mean, what? You've probably got Charlie Taylor and, yeah. and J Rod. If, if, if so, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think company likes to introduce Brownhill at some point. He has to try and fit him in somewhere. Um, but I mean, going off what company said, he didn't ahead Tuesday, of the game, did he? No, I, w I, was, I was surprised at that. I was surprised at that because really? usually I think it, at half time he's always I think the last two previous is lynched yeah. 
brought Larson off, hasn't he, on the stroke of our, just coming yeah. into the second half and brought Brown along. But company ahead of this game and said one game at a time. I uh, insist that himself and the team are focusing on it. Um, he's gone on to say they're getting something for their efforts, which is good, uh, but we need more now. I wouldn't quite call it a run, but it's just about the next game now and taking it one game at a time. Each week, the next game is very important, and this week, it's all about Saturday. I try not to speculate on the outcome. Winning gives us a better perspective than losing. I know that. But we're at a stage now where we have got everything to fight for. There's seven games left with everything to play for. We just have to try and win as many games as we can. And I know the team will do that anyway. It's always been in us. Clearly didn't help with Forrest doing a demolition job on Fulham last week. But that said, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, Sheffield United are currently playing their game in Hampton Art. At half time, they are one nil down to Liverpool. Darwin Nunes um, is is helping the cause. Oh, yeah. helping I think the he's cause. in my fantasy team as well. Well, Chelsea are turning <laughs> up against United as well. If you've got your fantasy teams out, um, Conor Gallagher and a Cole Palmer penalty. Which, oh, what again, a surprise! What? Yeah, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, Fred says Manchester United showing how decent our result at Chelsea was. Yeah, hundred percent. 100%, that 2-2 fighting spirit with 10 men. Uh, and I agree. I hope we sign Brun Larson. Yeah. I think he's been... Yeah. He's, he reminds me of back in the day when we sat, when we had Paul McVeigh on loan from Norwich. I wanted us yes. to sign him and we, ne- and we yeah. never went on to do it. Um, no. But it, he's, it um, good. He reminds me of... Uh, he's like Good Munson 10 years younger. I know he's oh, not quite 100%. 10 years younger, but he's like Good Munson a bit younger. And I think if we'd have signed Good Munson when he was a bit younger, he'd have been... It would have been a good signing. So, yeah, we we need Brun Larson. I think Definitely. he's one of our best players at the minute. Definitely. Christian asks in the chat, I'll go to you with this one. If you could take one of the old guard back from Everton, who would it be? Billy Mercer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goalkeeping coach. You know what? Fair shout. I'll give you that one. I will give you that one. Billy Mercer, yeah. If In terms of player, who would it be? Do you know what? I think it has to be Tarky. Only because... I'd, I'd have probably said the same. McNeil can't use his right foot. Still. And, and he had one good game and then seven bad and then would show up with an absolute yeah. world of performance and then another seven and it's just... And I'd like to say Keno, but he celebrated. He celebrated his goal. Yeah. You had your chance, mate. You had your chance. Yeah. And... and f- he played for Blackburn before us, so you know. Yeah, yeah. He's, the candle doesn't burn twice. Uh, Fred says no. Sheffield United haven't got out there half since the second minute. That's bad, and I think they had some really good chances in the first two minutes as well to go one nil up. So that's bad for them. Um, but yeah, it is at Goodison, three o'clock kickoff. Um, what have you made of our run? Do you think the performances are justified? Are we actually seeing our just reward for the way that we're starting to play? Because a lot of people, like say. At, myself included, everybody in the chat probably thought the same, that something needed to change. We all said it. I said it before, you know, the the old Heat and West Ham uh, situation. Yeah. We finally did change to Murich. We look more solid at the back. We look like yeah. we can take our foot off having to focus on defending because we can now focus on trying to go up the other end. But do you think we are getting our just rewards and eventually it will come, a big win will come? Yeah, we've we've had good performances this season where it's just not happened for us. Um, West Ham at home, Bournemouth at home, Palace at home, they're all very, we played well, we didn't get anything. Um, Liverpool at home, you know, yeah. they, they got them two disallowed goals and after that it gave us a kick up the arse. We just couldn't put it in the back of the net. Um, so, yeah, we, we've had good performances. It's just been a case of... Uh, Excuse me, getting the ball in the back of the net. And I think, again, it was evident on Tuesday. We could have won it at Chelsea. If we had 11 men, we probably would have done. Um, You know, we were doing so well against West Ham. And then, obviously, Ingsy come back to haunt us. We got the win against Brentford, which we very nearly threw away. Um, But, yeah, we're, we're getting the results that we've needed all season but we have had performances. But I know that 
the change in obviously bringing Murich in has been a massive hit help. Um, but bringing Cullen in, massive yeah, I was help. Say, but the, team, the, man, no. the man under your nose, the man right under your nose. Yeah. <laughs> um, but honestly, the team has been a breath of fresh air this season for me. He's been brilliant in last last couple of games. He's looked like the Premier League player. Yeah, that you know, he, he doesn't quite look like someone who can play in a team that's going to finish fifteenth. He still looks like he's a young Premier League player, but he's looking like a Premier League player that we saw last season. Um, yeah, for Farner. Foster, they ran Looks the a bit off it Tuesday night for Farnham for me. Um, Tuesday night, he didn't look oh, at his best, but then, no. but then yet again, Foster sort of made up for it because I thought Foster were pretty decent. Yeah. But they ran, they ran the. I mean, every single player on pitch ran the bollocks off. You yeah. could see it at the end of the game; they were absolutely shattered. But for Farnham, he didn't have good touches, but he ran, and that's all. That's all we want. So we're seeing the effort there that we weren't seeing at the start of the season as well. I think before Christmas we were saying we just want the effort there. If you put in everything in it, then we'd be you know, then we'd be okay with the results. But now we're seeing the effort and we're getting the results. Yeah, yeah. we are. We are. Christian says I thought Mutch's time with us would have been up in January and he could go on and win player of the season having only played about ten games. That's true. Awesome. That's true. There's not, there's awesome not many standout. No, What's he's that? he's played I saw something before and it were Murich has played like 44 league games for us or something and he's lost three. Wow. Like that's, you that's know. Some, somebody going, is that for a goalkeeper especially? <laughs> especially. Um, they've done that by two months in. <laughs> <laughs> First game of the season. Um, it's, to be fair, it's it's going to be a tough fixture, isn't it, down at, down at Goodison Park? Uh, we know what Everton are like. They will dig deep. They'll be a little bit like we used to be, you know, the low block, be resilient, try and put catches at our own game. But the big question I've got to ask you is score prediction because it's, we're on, like I say, we're on, we're on that train at the moment where we were all dead and buried. We'd all, we'd all, we'd all sort of, Said that's it. However, they reopened the lands at the imaginary Turf Moor train stadium. Um, and we all we all got on. We're all back on board. It's mm. it's a tough one to go call, isn't it? Like say seven cup finals to go. Yeah. My my head said my heart says win. My heart's always gonna say it, we're gonna get a win. Yeah. Um I can't ever want us, obviously don't ever want us not to, but I can't ever say that my heart says we're not going to win. Um, but I think it's going to be, like you say, typical Daichi performance, typical defensive performance from them. Try and count, catch us on counter-attack if they can. A few long balls that our defenders will struggle with. Um, but I'm going to go for another draw. I'm going to go for a nil-nil. I mean, a point's not bad on the road. Um, no. It's just obviously we've got to do our job with the teams around us. We need to be doing our bit. Uh, I'm going to go for a scrappy 1-0 win for us. I think Definitely. Everton will try to cancel us out, but yet defensively we'll be quite strong. Uh, and it'll just be that we seem to break them down. Um Fred says, says it all. I've had two Chelsea mates ask me if they could sign Murich. As long as Chelsea are willing to part with a good amount of money like they do for Brighton players, then no, potentially, no. potentially a, a communication. However, I hope he still says no. Um, but Fred says they can there, have first, <laughs> first goal yeah. is key at Goodison. We score it, their crowd will turn and we win. But then let's not forget, let's not forget, we also went there. Um, I think it was, I think Dash Dash had just not long taken over with the first game at Goodison. And I, I, Ben Mee put us 1 0 up, and within seconds we'd gone 2 1 down. Oh, no, I don't. In fact, no, it was Rafa. Rafa was still in charge, I believe, yeah. at that time. Um, so I were mistaken. But yeah, 
we could, we've we've had that first goal at Goodison before, and we had a mad two minutes after that, and things went sour. Uh, but this is a different Burnley, like you've said. Who knows what will happen? Um, who's who? Who are you worried about coming up against for Everton? Honestly, I know I slagged him off before, but McNeil, because <laughs> <laughs> he's got, he's going to have a point to prove. And yet, if I remember rightly, he played brilliantly in the cup against yeah. us. Um, he set Tarky up for first goal, didn't he? Um, so yeah, it's he's going to be well up for it. I mean, Tarky, he's probably going to take out Fofana, Foster, Audubon. There's going to be a crunching tackle on him. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm worried on McNeil. That's a fair shout. It's a fair shout. Uh guys, let us know. Let us know if you're listening to it on podcasts. Um, you can write your comments on Spotify now. I think you can put comments in. Um, if I put a question up when I upload it of how do you think we'll get on? If you want to put in your answer on there, let us know. Also, this will be available for people to watch back as soon as this ends. Um, you can get your comment in and let us know what you think, how you think the game is going to go and also your score prediction. Just want to say as well, a massive thank you to all our members on the channel. Uh, really do appreciate you also. Thank you very much indeed. Um, however, you can become a member of the channel. We are going to get back into the rhythm of things now. Um, and it is just 99p a month. That's it. 99p a month. Um, and we are going to be doing lots more things for that. It helps the channel grow, and all money made from this channel is going to be going to local charities within the Burnley community. So I'm not going to take anything from this. I just enjoy chatting shit over a camera. Simple as that. Um, but the money can go you to just some enjoy chatting shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, simple as. Simple as. I don't need the camera. <laughs> <laughs> mate i've had the camera plugged in and just talking to myself before you turned up so don't worry <laughs> about it i i put my own phone camera in so i could have a conversation with myself um but anthony's in the chat hope you well big up to yourself uh christy says is there any chance i could come on the show at some point at all yeah anytime uh get in touch with us through any of our social media as you can see on the screen uh or if you want for people listening instagram facebook youtube x threads who uses threads again these days it's sort of died down that one um but yeah get in touch with us and uh we'll try and sort something out mate uh be good uh and fred says you know we're going to have Bettino Markin talks and cullen on onana <laughs> what's his name um either way thank you very much everyone for watching it's it's a nice and short 45 minute one really do appreciate it. andrew before i be rude i say before i be rude be rude let me not sure, be rude sure, sorry yeah. <laughs> Let me not be rude. You've got a, you've got your channel growing, growing and going now. Yeah. And obviously, we we had a chat on there about the good times of being a Burnley fan. Uh, let people know where they can show their support to you as well, because it's nice to get everybody from a Claret's perspective supporting each other. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, yeah, as you said before, always Claret on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and. Just recently started my own podcast. Uh, had the lovely Dan Morehouse to join me, like you say, to talk about the good times of Burnley. Um, that's on YouTube and Spotify. Just search times like these podcasts, talking all about the amazing time supporting Burnley. Um, again, if you want to come on and be involved, it's a podcast about the fans, uh, for the fans, run by fans. If you want to come on and get involved and just talk shit about Burnley for an hour, drop me a message. Feel free to come on. Uh, and we'll just talk about the good times supporting Burnley rather than the shit we've had this season. 100%. And we've had some fair shit, haven't we? <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to this weekend's game. My stepdad's a blue. Uh, I'm working this weekend, so there won't be a watch along, unfortunately. However, I should be back for a watch along the following weekend at home to Brighton. I won't be on the game. Um, I'll be here behind the camera. So join us, join us next Saturday for the watch long. Um, I'm hoping to do a match preview for the game as well. Fingers crossed I can uh, get that one penciled in. Uh, work's been hectic, so I've got to try and juggle 
things around and times and people working is very difficult. But I really do love all your support, whether you remember or whether you're not and you watch, please consider subscribing. It really does help get us out there. Um, so thank you very much indeed. But for now, we are on the train. We are still on the train. It's not just stopped yet. Not just stopped yet. Seven stops to go. Um, but let's just see how we get on. It's the old guard. Dash versus company. Everton versus Burnley. And uh, let's hope for a positive result. There's only one thing left to say. Thank you very much, Andrew. And up the bloody Cheers. clarets. Come on! Come on!